Hello, everyone, and welcome to Arthritis Consumer Experts Arthritis at Home program. We are so happy to be kicking off uh, this brand new educational program with you today. It's going to come to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Motivation Monday, Wellness Wednesday, and Facts Friday. The reason for launching this program now, rather than when we plan to launch it in May or June, was because of the times we're living through. It's a crisis, and it's a crisis for people who are at high risk. And we know that everyone is at home worried, wanting facts, wanting more information, wanting to connect. And that's one of the reasons we're starting this program on an accelerated fashion and joining uh, you here today through our Facebook page. And we couldn't think of a better first guest than Dr. Susan Bartlett. Dr. Susan Bartlett is a professor of medicine at McGill University, and she's an adjunct professor of medicine at Johns Hopkins Medicine. Originally from London, Ontario, she completed a master's in psychology at McGill, a PhD in clinical psychology at Syracuse University in New York State, in psychology at McGill, and a PhD in clinical psychology at Syracuse University. A postdoctoral studies at completed her postdoctoral studies, pardon me, at Johns Hopkins. She joined the faculty at Johns Hopkins Medicine in 1995 and returned to Montreal to join the Faculty of Medicine at McGill in 2007 in both rheumatology and clinical epidemiology. We are absolutely thrilled and honored um, to have Dr. Bartlett joining us here today. Thank you for coming. Uh, and sitting down with us for a few minutes, um, Dr. Bartlett, to share your expertise, knowledge, and insights with our audience. Cheryl, I'm delighted to be here. I have been uh, working hard all morning uh, on the sewing machine. Um, oh! As you may know, we have such a shortage of masks right now, and sewing is something that I enjoy doing, and it's a lovely distraction. Oh, so thank you. a little break from the sewing machine right now. Thank you so Dr. much, Dr. Dr. Bartlett. Well, yeah. I'm delighted to be here and, and to be able to reach out to all of your members um, who watch so regularly and from whom we've learned so much as well. So. Yeah, yeah, we're a big village, aren't we? And thank you so much for helping frontline workers and working not just your brain into the ground, but your fingers into the ground as well. Dr. Bartlett, you, um, your clinical and research interests address how factors like emotional distress and health behaviors affect how well people both feel and function. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't think of a better topic to start off our program, given the times we're living in. Tell us a little bit about your research work and, and how some of the things you've learned um, can help us during this time uh, of living through a pandemic. Well, you know, I think in some ways, people with inflammatory arthritis have a little bit of an edge on the rest of the population right now because what I've learned is how well people with inflammatory arthritis cope with uncertainty. It is part of everyday life. And if there's one thing we're dealing with right now, it is uncertainty. And if you think even a week ago, who could have imagined where we are? And I've even stopped guessing where we might be three, four, five days from now. Um, so I, I think some of the lessons that we've learned in terms of how people with arthritis have come to live with a disease that can be unpredictable, that can change from day to day, uh, offer some insights for the rest of us in terms of uh, being able to cope well. Yeah. Um, it is hard when you don't know what to expect, and that's certainly what we're living with right now. The other issue I think that makes it so challenging is we're asked to stay in our homes. So most of our routines have been taken away from us. And for a lot of us, there's not a lot to do. People are struggling to try and figure out how do I fill up the day right now? Yeah, um, you know, Susan, um, one of the things that our community is facing, ha always faces with our disability, depending on our level of disability, is isolation at home already. And this is, kind, this is like super additive to that. So what are you hearing from your patients? You see patients, you do research with patients, and you do research in patients who are experiencing um, these things. What are some of the sort of aha moments for you? What are you seeing? Well, I think one of the things that we're seeing a lot of is that people are worrying a great deal. They're worrying about the things they've always worried about, which is how is my disease doing overall? Um, am I going to be staying in control? Or are my medicines going to continue to work as well as they have? 
but they have a whole new set of worries now. And those worries may be about food and, and getting food because now going out of your home and going into the grocery store has a whole new set of concerns that go with it. Um, with all of the talk about medications and some of the medications that are most important to our patients, uh, that's been a concern as well. So it's pretty easy to hear an awful lot on the news and then just find yourself thinking and thinking and thinking. Rumination is what right. we call it. So how do you deal with that, Dr. Bartlett? Well, you know, I think one of the things is that we all cope with anxiety a little bit differently. So for some people, um, they'll spend a lot of time trying to find more information. And they may spend hours out of the day right now online trying to become experts in um, what's happening. That's one of the things that I think we don't recommend at this time. In fact, one of the things you have to be very careful about is um, how much exposure you're getting to COVID-19 information. Um, there's a lot of other things that people are trying to juggle right now in terms of how, how do I stay active? How, how do I keep um, moving? How do I do the things that I, I need to do to keep myself healthy? So I guess one of the first things that I always say with people that I work with is um, how are things going for you right now and how is it, how is it working out? Uh, the things that are working well and helping you to cope, keep doing them. But things that are becoming a problem, you've got to get a handle on it now. Um, why now? Well, because it's stress is one of the mortal enemies of having arthritis. Stress, there's no better setup to have a flare than to be under stress for a period of time, a prolonged period of time. And so putting a priority into getting yourself grounded, getting yourself the best that you can be given the circumstances, I think has never been more important than it is today. Yeah, how, how about peer support? I mean, I sometimes, I know I have a group of people myself that I can reach out to and who are there for me, but I'm worried right now they're going through the same things I'm going through. So I don't want to sort of offload my stress or my concern or fear onto them. How, how do we deal with that in community, Dr. Bartlett? I think the first thing, Cheryl, is to recognize it's natural and it's normal to feel anxious and to feel worried about your family and friends and to wonder how they're coping. They're having the same concerns about you. But you know what? The very best thing that you can do right now is to keep yourself healthy. Be a role model for other members in your community. Okay. Take care of yourself so that they don't have to worry as much about you. I think that we need to be connecting with people all of the time, doing the kinds of things we're doing right now. That's why right. I was so excited to hear about what you're doing with, with um, arthritis at home because it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful venue to be able to reach out and connect with a broader group of people. It is hard to be at home alone, but you know what? It's also hard to be at home with the same people day after day after day. <laughs> so, yeah, there's kind of no winning in this scenario right now. But to the extent that we can all have a uh, lean on that sense of humor that's yeah. internal to all of us, um, compassion, empathy, and um, a really short memory. Oh, uh, that's a good, that's a great tip. Yeah, especially if you are living with a couple of people in close quarter, whether they be family uh, or roommates. You know, one of the things I find myself doing, Susan, is I, I'm trying to take joy in super mundane things. Like I'm trying to sort of go, oh, look at that sun, the way it's coming through the window. I know it might sound silly, but I just, it's, it's amazing how much you can give yourself emotionally, psychologically, when you take notice of very small things. I'm sure there's some fancy clinical uh, way of phrasing this, but I have found that that's what I'm tending to do these days. Like when I'm starting to feel a little down, I try to get myself out of it by looking and noticing something outside the window. You know, I watch some birds sort of collecting material to go feather a nest. And I think, oh, that's so cool. Watch the way they do that. Um, so it's little things like that. What, what, what is that? Well, I think you're talking about two things that are absolutely essential that, and that uh, we as psychologists use as our primary tools in our toolbox. One is distraction. So it's really, really important. If you find yourself worrying more than, I'd say if you're spending more than, well, probably 30 minutes a day thinking about COVID and thinking about what's ahead, you need to get some breaks uh, and you need to be able to contain that worry. And I can talk a little bit about how you do that. 
but one of the most important things to do is be able to distract yourself. So to, to focus outside. I love the, the analogy of looking out. The, I was looking out your window and thinking that's exactly what I was doing this morning, looking through my blinds, watching things happen outside. My husband and I were walking yesterday. I'll tell you, our, our dog has never had as many walks as she's getting. With <laughs> He's absolutely thrilled by the fact she's got people home 24-7. <laughs> But we were remarking on how we've had a chance to really connect with a lot of neighbors that we've lost touch with over time. There's, we have a dog park at the end of our street, so there's a lot of people that are, are coming back and forth. And there's just so many people we've reconnected with. And that's been kind of fun. Um, we've realized that we really enjoy the walks and we like the time out and we like getting out in the neighborhood. We're noticing all of the, there's a, a movement here in Quebec of kids drawing rainbows and putting um, signs in the windows, um, hopeful signs yeah. uh, about um, what better days are ahead. Yeah. So each day we go by and we look at the, how the signs are changing or the new signs that are up there. there. There's many, many positive things to to be able to tune into. And I do get the feeling that when we come out of this pandemic, now it may be months, realistically, before things start to get back into a regular pattern, but I think we're going to be different. And I honestly do believe we're going to be better because yeah. we've all had to stop. We've all had to stop and think and rethink what we're doing and spend our days in different ways. And, and I'm finding that there are some real positives in that, just in the same way that you're talking about. So distraction yeah. is, is, is that really, really important strategy. But then also reframing. You said there was a fancy term. I think you're thinking of the term. Reframing. Okay, there you go. And, and, and that's really... You know, one can think about how how much life has changed and what all of this may mean, but to also be able to think of it in a positive light and to, to think of the good that's coming and what you're what you're learning about yourself and your family and, and just given this in some ways, this gift of a pause to really think about what's important. Well, I, I just realized how much of my day has gone on automatic pilot for so long. Yeah, and, um, and I'm beginning to reconnect with some of the simple things that really do make you feel feel better. I, I'm exercising more than I've exercised in a long time, and I feel better as a result. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the challenges people um, like myself may face. We, you know, we've learned over certainly the last decade the research on exercise and you know sort of psycho emotional wellness and the benefits of it and have gotten into now a routine almost many of us where we are doing that exercise many of us have relied on facilities to do that so moving it now into the home it's it's like sh it, it's kind of shaken some some of our care plan if you will up yeah. um i have searched the internet uh to find appropriate um, exercise routines for myself because so much of what they're showing you know we can't do and we do have um, experts coming on uh, on Wednesday. We have Dr. Jackie Whitaker joining us. Um, we have occupational therapists and other physiotherapists who are going to join the program in the next week or two. Uh, okay. So we hope to learn how do we bring that stuff from the gym uh, into our home. So if we were to think about the mental aspects, the mental wellness aspects of that, Dr. Bartlett, how do we bring those benefits we get from the gym into the house? Like how, how do we do that? Well, I think one of the first things I always love to fall back on is the simplest of all, and that's breathing. Just okay. checking in on your breath. Because, you know, breathing is one of the most fundamental things we do, and it's one of the most powerful things we do. Um, as we get more stressed and anxious, it's natural to breathe more shallowly. I see you're taking a deep breath. I, ju I just realized I'm like hardly breathing at all while you're speaking. So it would be great if everybody right now would just take a deep breath and, and bring that oxygen all the way to the bottom of your lungs. I, I suspect people are doing that right now. And you can feel some of the tension just begin to fall away just by taking a deep breath. So, you know, reconnecting with your breath a few times during the day. Um, going for walks. Walks are so important and so therapeutic and so good for the mind. My husband's an exercise physiologist and he'll tell you all the physical benefits of physical activity but i think it's the mental benefits that really yeah. try yeah because when you're out there walking it especially if the sun is shining it's hard not to feel a little bit better 
Yeah. Um, there are other simple things that are so important too, getting enough sleep. And I know it's easy for sleep to get disrupted. It, it, you know, it, when you're more anxious, sometimes it's harder to sleep. You may have trouble falling asleep or you might wake up a little bit earlier than you intend. But it's so important that we maintain these routines yeah. and that we don't just stay up too late or sleep in longer than usual because it, and that daily routine, um, your OT who comes on will, will speak a lot about this, I'm sure. But that daily routine is so, so important for just helping us mentally to feel structured and to feel like things are okay and, and yeah. that we do have at least some things that we know and can anticipate. Um, but so staying that, That's staying amazing. Connected. So my key takeaways, I'm, well, obviously I'm already breathing more deeply. Thank you. Uh, our breath, pay attention to our breath, use it as a way of letting stress go. Um, physiologically, we know that this is an oxygenation process. It's bringing more oxygen into our blood, which is delivering all kinds of good things to our body. Um, don't dwell on things if you can. So ruminating for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, uh, it's time to stop that track. It's time, it's time to set up for a flare, yeah. unfortunately. So it's, it's not that you don't, don't give yourself the luxury of doing it. It's absolutely essential that you not do it. And yeah. Cheryl, I'll leave you with one tip, which is yeah. if you find yourself, for anyone who finds themselves really struggling, um, lost in their head and unable to kind of break free of that, make a deal with yourself. Set a time each day when you will allow yourself to think about this. You, you'll allow yourself to worry. Um, maybe you'll pick seven o'clock in the evening and give yourself 20 minutes to sit down and just Think about the things, all the things that you feel that you need to think about. You know what happens when we try to do this? We find that we can worry for about 10 minutes or so, and then it gets, well, it, it gets a little tedious and the mind starts to wander. Yeah. But the trouble is, if you don't give yourself that set scheduled time, then the worry can take over and feel pervasive and happen. And it, and it probably permeates throughout your day. Absolutely. So you say to yourself, when those worries come up, I have a time to think about it. It's not now. Now's my time to look at the window at the birds. Yeah. Or to go for a walk. Seven o'clock is the time when I think about well, I'll think about that. That's incredibly practical. Uh, I am now gonna pack all my worries into eleven o'clock in the morning. I've just decided while I was listening to you speak, just about the time I stop and make myself a cup of tea. Um, Dr. Bartlett, you have been so fantastic to take a break out of what I know is a crazy busy time for you. I know you're there for your patients. Um, I know you're there uh, trying to get uh, very much needed research uh, on what's happening to people like uh, our community uh, in the midst of this COVID crisis. We wish you uh, all the best in that endeavor. And thank you for taking that type of work on so that people um, out in the arthritis community can, can learn from this experience as horrible, as hard, and as sometimes tragic as it uh, is we want to find the silver linings. We want to find the lessons and, and move forward. So we couldn't thank you enough. Um, and we look forward to speaking to you again. You're, you're going to be a crowd pleaser. I know that. Oh, Cheryl, I, 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 I truly enjoy opportunities to be able to talk with you. And I'm so thrilled to see what you're doing. So excited to see the others that you're bringing on. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun together. Yep. We can all learn from each other. Me too. Thank you so much, Dr. Bartlett. Be safe.